Hello, Mrs. Spiegel. This is Lena Garrett. I chose to do my report on the book Farewell to Mansmar by Jeanne Wakatsuki Houston and her husband James D. Houston. The main of the book takes place inside an internment camp called Mansmar. Her family is moved there after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Life there is difficult as most of the Japanese inside the camp aren't used to the heat during the day and the below zero temperatures at night. They also have an inadequate amount of clothes and other provisions to get them through the five years inside the camp. Three main motives in the book are war, prejudice, and family, the latter of which I decided to focus on. Throughout the book, the wa Wakatsuki traces the disintegration of her family to the mess halls. The halls were cramped and to overflowing, and many of the families would separate to go sit with friends, which destroyed their somewhat ritualistic fam family dinners. When they stopped eating together, the Wakatsuki stopped connecting with each other, preferring to spend their daytime hours working or volunteering rather than cooped up together in the cramped barracks. The final blow to the family's crumbling foundation is a realization that they can no longer depend on Papa's solid character for strength. Papa's return from his arrest as a suspected spy accelerates the erosion of the Wakatsuki family structure. He is no longer the source of strength he was before the war, and his return kills all hope that the family will rally around him as patriarch. Most of the older children eventually abandon Papa and Mama and Papa in California and relocate to New Jersey. This shows the deep divide that Manzamar creates in the once happy Wakatsuki family. Wakatsuki blames her family's falling apart on the camps rather than on the war, because the war has little to do with the overall experience of Manzamar, since the war itself is so far removed from the daily reality of the Wakatsuki's existence. While the book focuses on Wakatsuki family as a whole, the main struggle seems to be between Jian and her father, Wakatsuki Ko. Both are changed drastically during the five years that they are in the camp. Jian becomes <clears throat> Jian because of the fact that she's forced to grow up under such extreme conditions, and her father because he comes to the realization that he can no longer can never become a citizen to a country that he calls home for over thirty years. While at Fort Lincoln, Ko is interviewed and asks the interviewer when he was born. The man begrudgingly tells him that he was born in nineteen thirteen, and Ko replies I have been living in this country nine years longer than you have. Do you realize that? Yet I am prevented by law from becoming a citizen. I am prevented by law from owning land. I am now separated from my family without cause. Ko, feeling betrayed by America, by America often fights with Gianni over her um, becoming, an, becoming too Americanized. It takes Gianni until the end of her high school years to realize, that her, um, realize her father's view. On page 185, she states... As I came to understand what Manzamar had meant, it gradually filled me with the shame for being a person guilty of something enormous enough to deserve that kind of treatment. In order to please my accusers, I tried for the um, first few years after our release to become someone acceptable. I both succeeded and failed. By the end of 17, uh, 17 I knew that making it, in the terms I had tried to adopt, was not only unlikely, but false and empty. No more authentic for me than trying to emulate my great-aunt Toya. Despite these challenges, however, Jeanne becomes the queen or president of her high school class, as much as um, as well as Valley Victorian, and is the first in her family to graduate high school. And that is it for my project and my video. Thank you for so much for watching this, Miss Spiegel. I hope you liked it. Bye.